Hello everybody, happy Saturday. My name is Mr. G, your meteorologist. Thank you for joining me today. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the latest storms that's uh, making an impact across America right now. We got one on the East Coast, one on the West Coast. We got to talk about some lake effect snow over the Great Lakes and this storm that's currently uh, dropping a lot of snow and rain across Oregon and into California as well. We're going to be uh, looking at the effects of that storm as that storm has the potential for bringing snow to the southern U.S. and to parts of the southeast as we get through the about the midpoint into next week. So we got a lot to talk about in today's video. If you're watching me today on TikTok, you can please follow me on the channel. Leave your comments as well. And you can do the same on TikTok. I mean on YouTube where you can subscribe to the channel. And I'm happy to announce that I finally crossed the 600 subscriber mark on YouTube. And I'm approaching 3,000 followers on TikTok. And the TikTok channel is growing by leaps and bounds. So, I mean, I, 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 I'm very happy with the support I'm receiving on TikTok. YouTube is a little slower, but it comes around every now and then. But I'm very happy with the progress we're starting to make. Pick up a little bit of traction here on the channel. So, great day in America, everybody. So, um, what we're looking at today is the city of Portland is our city of the day that we're going to be having our live shot from. And we're seeing that snow out there across the city right now. We're seeing some mixed precipitation. There are some areas of freezing rain, especially to the south of Portland there, near Salem and some of the uh, Corvallis. We're seeing some freezing rain in those areas. We're also having some sleet in the foothills of the Cascade Mountain Range. We're seeing a lot of freezing rain and sleet and ice in those locations. Some areas can pick up about a half inch of ice across parts of Oregon as well. So a lot to worry about as far as the uh, the, uh, the dangerous wet driving conditions. So uh, going to make for a lot of icy and slippery roads there. It's going to be uh, hard to get traction. Uh, a lot of personal injuries for slips and falls and things like that. So please be very careful out there in the Pacific Northwest as you um, uh, deal with this latest storm that's going to be affecting your area and eventually will work its way across the Rockies down to the Southern Rockies, across the Southern Plains, and across the Gulf Coast to the southeastern U.S. to head up the Aleutian uh, the Appalachian Mountain Range with more snow and freezing rain and sleet in those areas as well. So a lot to worry about and deal with with these latest storm, these iterations of inclement weather as our El Nino continues to be in full swing. But however, its days are numbered because based on some of the latest computer projections, computer models, uh, El Nino might begin to wane sometime in April or May, and we could see transition to Enso neutral and possibly La Nina. Boy, La Nina has been very persistent. We've dealt with the La Nina the last two to three winters and uh, maybe one season of El Nino. Now, you can definitely tell the climate change because when La Nina and El Nino first came into my my uh, sphere of knowledge, there was seven year cycles between the two. We would have a seven year in between uh, El Nino, seven years between La Nina. So sometimes you can have 14 year swing from La Nina to El Nino. You would spend one season under El Nino, then seven years in so neutral, then after seven years, La Nina, and then it would go back and forth. Now it just seems like it's just a, a spinning wheel, of La Nina to El Nino, La Nina to El Nino, just, so it's definitely out of whack as far as the frequency in which these events happen when there was a much wider gap in, in these events. So enough yapping about that as somebody made a smart uh, comment before where he said I'm getting a degree in yapology <laughs> I, I I guess it is a degree in yapology if you really think about it if you're doing broadcast meteorology here so anyway that's the storm there in the Pacific Northwest 
And let's take a look at the uh, lake effect snow across the Great Lakes right now, where places like Buffalo is gonna is picking up a record snowfall with up to four feet of lake effect snow over their area. And later on in the video, we're gonna take a closer look at what creates that lake effect snow. So let's jump into our radar and take a look at the Great Lakes and the lake effect snow across that area right now. Okay, here's where we're seeing that lake effect snow in and across the Buffalo area. Here is the Buffalo area right here, and look at that lake effect snow. Now, the heaviest of the snow is currently just falling to the south of Buffalo, but all it takes is a little bit of a change in the direction of the wind to make that, uh, that patch of snow move mainly over the city, but we are seeing very heavy snow in and around the Buffalo area. And let's take a look at a wide wider view of the lake effect snow over the greater Great Lakes area so that you can see the extent that this lake effect snow is taking place. Here is a wider shot of the lake effect snow over the Great Lakes and we're seeing some of that great that snow even over Lake Superior uh, that uh, lake effect snow is blowing over the upper peninsula of Michigan. We're seeing it over the boot of Michigan. There is some lake effect snow. The lake effect snow over southern Michigan near Mile City. So we're seeing it there. Lake effect snow over parts of Ontario, uh, northern Wisconsin. What well, we're seeing, so we're seeing a lot of lake effect snow out there across the Great Lakes. And later on in the video, when we get closer to the end, we're going to talk more extensively about lake effect snow and what it is and, and how it develops and different things like that. What are the criteria that's needed for that lake effect snow? So let's move on with the rest of the video and take a look at the forecast as we talk about our newest storm and the departing storm and plus most importantly the Arctic air that's going to be that is currently settling over the middle of the country right now with Arctic very with very very cold air and very dangerous wind chills that's even affecting the NFL playoff games today that we have out there so we had to postpone the Buffalo game because of the uh, lake effect snow and it's also going to affect the Kansas City game so we're going to take a look at all of that stuff here coming up in our with our maps and everything so uh, if you're just joining me team please thank you for watching the channel uh, leave your likes comments feel free to subscribe to me on TikTok and YouTube on this channel we have videos every day if I can get it but sometimes we have to miss depending on my school and work schedule and things like that okay Okay, so let's move on with the rest of the weather forecast and talk about what's going on for the rest of the country that we've taken an ex a good look at the Great Lakes and the lake effect snow. Here's a look at the current radar situation where we're seeing that lake effect snow. And some of this is snow related to the, part, the departing storm system that brought all of that heavy snow over the Midwest yesterday and the severe weather down along the Gulf Coast and in the South and the wintry weather over the Appalachians and all of the rain along the East Coast as well. So that's that departing system right there. We're seeing that lake effect snow across the Great Lakes still to this um, day. Here is the current radar or the current weather alerts for the Plains and the Great Lakes. We still have winter storm postings, winter weather advisories, and we this is expired so this can be removed the blizzard warning across um, uh, Iowa and parts of uh, the Dakota so that's uh, expired now so that's not important but we did see that heavy heavy snow this is snow yet to fall across the Midwest now a lot of this is going to fall as a result of lake effect snow so we're going to see a lot of lake effect snow here along western the boot of Michigan uh, the Upper Peninsula, we're going to see lake effect snow here over western New York. So Watertown up there in Syracuse and Rochester and Buffalo, we're going to see that lake effect snow. So a lot of this yet to fall is going to be the result of lake effect snow. Here are some of the snow reports from the Midwest that we had from yesterday's storm. So the Quad Cities Airport picked up 15.4 inches and we saw 15 inches in Davenport, Iowa. We saw 
14.8 inches at the airport and Quad City Airport in Illinois. We saw 14.7. And Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin picked up 14.3 inches of snow as well. So here is our future radar for Monday. Where we're going to see another storm system, our storm that's currently moving across the Pacific Northwest. Monday is going to be across the Southern Plains, and that's going to start off with some snow across Texas, uh, parts of Arkansas. We're going to be seeing snow in Oklahoma, through Tennessee, northern Mississippi, northern Alabama. And so we're going to be seeing snow all the way to North Carolina and Virginia. So this is going to be one of the first opportunities for snow. For a lot of you in the South, I know a lot of people in the South often ask me in my chat on YouTube and stuff, oh, when are we going to see snow in Mississippi or, or whatever? Well, you're gonna, might, you might see it this go around with this next storm, but I can guarantee you're going to see that ice because you always see that ice. You're in what I call the freezing rain zone, so you're going to see that freezing rain over the next three days here from parts of Texas all the way through Louisiana, Arkansas. Uh, you're going to see that through Mississippi and Louisiana, Tennessee, Kentucky. Uh, you're going to see freezing rain and sleet. And you're going to also see, uh, in some areas, you might see a rain and snow mix more toward the mountainous and hilly areas. You're going to see more of a mix, but more of the flat plain or prairie areas. We're going to be seeing more of that freezing rain. And what freezing rain is, is when uh, precipitation falls from the upper levels, the upper layers of the atmosphere falls through a relatively a, a, a layer of warmer air. So the snow that falls out of the cloud melts, turns into a liquid, becomes rain, and then it refreezes just above the surface so once that uh, rain hits the surface it freezes on contact with the ground and that creates freezing rain it falls feels like it's raining you might even feel a little bit of icing even in those drops you might feel them starting to feel really cold if they hit your face they might even feel like you feel a uh, little pellets in it but once it hit the ground it refreezes on contact with the surface that's how you get freezing rain, ladies and gentlemen. And here we are with our snow forecast as we head through Wednesday. And we're going to be picking up three to five inches from parts of central Arkansas, uh, Tennessee, Kentucky, uh, northern Mississippi, northern Alabama, extreme northwestern Georgia. You guys will pick up less than an inch. Uh, you're going to see a one to three inches in a strip here across uh, southern, southern Arkansas, north central Mississippi, northwestern Alabama, northwestern Georgia, and then over parts of eastern Tennessee and western T uh, North Carolina, you guys are going to be seeing some snow. And some of that snow where you could pick up one to three inches over places like Fayetteville, Arkansas, Springfield, uh, Missouri, Paducah, Kentucky, Louisville, um, Evansville, Indiana, you're going to see that potential for one to three snow, inches of snow in southern Ohio, uh, western Pennsylvania, uh, West Virginia as well. You're going to be picking up uh, that three to five inch here over central, like Charleston, West Virginia. You guys are going to be picking up some snow. So finally, some snow across the southern United States. And we're going to be seeing that storm system bring rain to the east of that low pressure. So heavy rain out over the Atlantic, but snow over the interior, over the land. And you could even see snow in Boston. We might be able to finally pick up a little bit of snow in New York City, Washington, D.C., even as far south as Raleigh, North Carolina. But we're definitely going to be seeing that snow over the Appalachian Mountains. So down through central and western North Carolina, eastern Tennessee, the eastern half of Kentucky, uh, all of Virginia, West Virginia, e eastern Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York. We're going to be seeing that heavy snow from this storm. Not necessarily heavy snow, but you're going to pick up some snow from this storm system. This is our current storm that's over the Pacific Northwest by the time we get through uh, Wednesday morning next week, that storm system is going to be basically like a nor'easter off the coast of the northeast. So we have the polar vortex is back again, once again. This happens every year, folks. I, this is not new to you. This is not a surprise. 
It's going to be cold out there. Very, very cold across the plains is where it's going to start. And we're going to be seeing that this morning. We saw those morning lows out there in the 20s, negative 20s across North and South Dakota and through parts of Montana, Wyoming. We saw those lows in the negative 20s. We saw the temperatures still above zero in Minnesota as these as far as southern and eastern Minnesota, the Twin Cities, we had a high this morning of 7 degrees here in Minneapolis. It was 0 in Des Moines and 3 down in Kansas City. So that cold air is definitely making its way into the country and further down to the south. So tomorrow morning, expect that cold to be even a little bit further entrenched across the central United States. Well, we're going to see a morning low of minus 7 here in Minneapolis, minus 16 in Des Moines, minus 10 in Kansas City, 2 degrees above down in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and we're going to be seeing those temperatures in the minus 20s across the Dakota, so North and South Dakota. Same thing for you, Montana and Wyoming. We're going to see those temperatures on the leeward side of the Rockies in the negatives, 20s, okay? Uh, still above zero across the western slopes of the Rockies. So Salt Lake City and Boise, you guys are going to still be okay. The nice, not bad in Salt Lake City with a morning low of 32 degrees. Not bad. That's not bad, all things considered. Here we are as we look at Monday morning on Martin Luther King Day. I don't have work. My wife is off. We're government employees, so we don't have to worry about working on uh, Martin Luther King Day. So, um, and here is those cold temperatures for your morning lows on Monday. Again, that minus 11 in Fargo, you're going to be a negative in the single digits below zero in places like Chicago, Kansas City, and even here in the Twin Cities. We're going to be in the teens below zero on Monday morning here across the Twin Cities. And we're going to be seeing those team below zeros across North Dakota. But Nebraska, we're going to be in the single digits below zero across North Nebraska and Kansas. The same thing for you in Colorado and parts of Wyoming. The uh, the 20s, in the, you're going to be in the negative 20s over western Montana. But we're going to still be nice in Salt Lake City and the western slopes in Utah of the Rockies and Nevada and even we're going to see the mornings in the lower 30s so not bad over there but the cold is going to spread further south and east as we move more through the week Tuesday morning negative 5 in the morning in Minneapolis that's not the worst we've seen we can see here 30 below and 40 and even 60 below uh, this is a a mile uh, this is actually a a fairly mild uh, polar vortex this time. It's fighting those El Nino effects. So even though we're seeing a polar vortex, it's being moderated a lot by the effects of El Nino. So this is not the worst it could be. I know some of the other media outlets, oh, this is uh, like they've never seen this before. Trust me, you're getting a deal on this polar outbreak. This is all things considered, this this is nothing. We can we can you ride right through this one. It's going to be short lived anyway. I can tell you by the time we get to the end of the month here in the next couple of weeks or so, that last week of January here in the Twin Cities, we're going to be looking at highs in the 40s. So uh, take your blessings. Just take your blessings with an El Nino as far as the warmer temperatures. Because next winter promises to be La Nina, and you are probably not going to like La Nina winter. That's not going to be fun. Unless you're in the southwest, in the west coast, it's going to be warmer and drier. But if you are in the Midwest, the central U.S., and the east coast, you're going to be colder and wetter. That's The snow comes back next winter. We have if it, it pans out that we have a La Nina next winter, but based on the models, that it's a possibility that La Nina is going to rear its ugly head around next year. So here we are, your forecast wind chills for tomorrow morning. The wind chills are going to be in the wind chill advisory category over Minnesota, 
Um, we're going to see wind chill advisory category, wind chill warning criteria over North Dakota and over parts of uh, South Dakota and over Iowa. We're going to see wind chill warning criteria and wind chill advisory over Missouri, over Kansas, over Colorado, over Wyoming, over Montana and Wisconsin. So we're going to also see wind chill advisory over Michigan. So it's going to be very cold in the mornings. It's going to feel like it's minus 20 or more in a lot of areas. In some places it's going to feel like it's more than minus 40. So it's going to be very, very cold out there. Here is our western storm right now as it's making its way on shore across the west. So mostly over Oregon. So Seattle is up here. Seattle is actually in the clear on this storm system right now. It's actually partly cloudy skies in the area now but down south to Oregon and Portland we're gonna be we're seeing that snow over the Cascades we're seeing that freezing rain in the foothills of the Cascades and in the hills along the coast and more of the coastal areas so uh, Corvallis and Salem areas like that Portland we're seeing snow and rain and freezing rain in those areas so a sloppy weekend across the Pacific Northwest and even into California, where we're seeing heavy rain down to San Francisco, San Jose, and we're seeing snow over the Sierra Nevadas as well. So heavy snow in the Sierra Nevadas, where we're going to pick up four feet of snow from the Cascades down into the Sierra Nevada. Here's a look at the freezing rain. Some areas can pick up a half inch of here around like Eugene, where we can see over a half inch and areas up to a half inch. So a lot of hip of freezing rain and ice uh, icing out there across uh, Oregon and uh, parts of Idaho as well. So here is the uh, weather advisories for the western states. We have that uh, blizzard warning over Idaho, Pocatello, Twin Falls, uh, Idaho Falls. We're seeing um, the winter, that blizzard warning. We have winter storm warning around or like Boise. We're seeing winter storm over Montana, winter storm over parts of Oregon and Washington as well. We're seeing that blizzard over the Cascades and we're seeing winter storm warnings over the Sierra Nevada. So a lot of wintry weather across the western U.S. As the latest storm comes on shore, and here we are as we're picking up uh, over uh, about a foot of snow in a lot of areas. In some areas, we're going to pick up 24 feet. In some areas, we're going to pick up three feet or more. So a lot of snow to be had for the for the Rockies. So uh, good accumulations for skiing and other winter activities. Now, the part I've been waiting for all video, we're going to talk about lake effect snow. Now, my wife used to go to school in Indiana. She went to school and she used to live in Mishawaka, which is near uh, South Bend where that Catholic school is. That What's that college? Notre Dame. She used to live by Notre Dame. And she used to always talk about the lake effect snow in northern Indiana off of Lake Michigan. So they're going to be going through that today. They're going through that the last three days. They're going to be going through that tomorrow. So again, the lake effect snow. But the real jackpot for Lake Effect Snow is freaking Buffalo. Buffalo gets beat over the head with Lake Effect Snow. So, so this current bout of Lake Effect Snow, the winds are blowing just right across the lakes right now that is picking up that warmer air over the lake, blowing the cold air off of the land on the other side of the lake. So we're talking about the land mass over Ohio and Michigan, the air is blowing from the west across that land where it's cold. It's already snow on the ground. So it's really cold air blowing across that land mass to the water, Lake Erie, where it's warmer. The lakes are warmer than the land. So that warm air, that cold air blows over the lakes clouds start to form because it's being cooled rapidly by that cold air blowing over that warmer air over the lakes so that warm air gets transplaced by that cold air blowing off the landmass 
that causes clouds to form like really rapidly clouds to fall in heavy snow because of that cold air being super cool it's called adiabatic cooling and it happens very fast so that air that cold air gets blown over places like Buffalo on the other lakes on the landmass on the other side where it's cold again that warm moist air now coming off the lake that warm air moist air is blowing over the cold air over the land on the other side of the lake so now it's condensation and heavy snow so the potential for feet of snow to impact Buffalo and Watertown with four feet of snow or more so we are looking at uh, a, a snow a snow Manhattan across the eastern Great Lake. now we're seeing lake effect snow all over we're seeing it over western Michigan we're seeing it over the upper peninsula off of Lake Superior we're seeing we're seeing it over southern Lake Michigan It's going off of Lake Huron into Ontario so we're seeing lake effect snow all over but this here is a special situation. This is a special deal here because the winds are blowing just right and it's just enough distance from the landmass across the lake to the other side of the land where this, the further that air blows across the lake, the more moisture it can uh, absorb and con condense and generate. So the heavier the lake effect snow is once it hits the land on the other side. So I'm going to step off the camera so that we could talk about this here. So we're going to go off the camera. Uh oh, uh oh, I don't want to let's move the move the green screen. So we're going to talk about this off camera. Let me bring the mic around so that we can hear me better. So let's talk about this. So the distance the wind travels across warm lake, the warm lake is known as fetch why it, it, it's it, it is doing exactly what it sounds like it's fetching that warm moist air off of the lake and that lake is carried from the southern tip of the lake toward the northeastern tip it's it's traversing the length of the lake so the greater the fetch leads to higher amounts of moisture draw from the lake because that wind is having a further distance across the lake to travel so conversion did takes place with winds at the surface and it leads to a single intense band of snow. So basically the air, the land rises up again once that air hits the landmass. It goes up because of the rise in the landmass. So that air gets funneled in a narrow band because it's, it's heavy air so it's not going to necessarily get lifted up over the landmass but it's going to wedge itself between the land masses, the lower levels of the land mass, and come out in the lowest level, and that's where Buffalo is. So that convergence uh, leads to an intense band of snow because it's now it's being condensed and squeezed together. So the snow is being pumped out of it. It's kind of like squeezing more moisture out you take a wet rag and you squeeze it and it, the water drops out that kind of is what's happening with this air that's coming off of the lake over buffalo the air is being condensed and squeezed as that uh as that air comes across the lake over a more narrow strip of the water so it's being squeezed and that moisture even more moisture is being drawn out of it so to get the crippling lake effect snow, you need a temperature at 7,500 feet of about 18 degrees. Not necessarily, a, this is an example, but it needs to be well below freezing. Freezing, like well below freezing. We're gonna go 18, but the temperature at the surface is 51 degrees. That's still cold, but that's above freezing. We don't even have ice on the Great Lakes right now. So it's 51, for example, at the surface. The lake effect snow develops when the temperature difference is at least 23 degrees. So you need the air above in the mid levels of the atmosphere to be at least 23 degrees colder than the air at the surface. So the top of the water, you need the air to be 23 
degrees or more colder. So that difference makes up the intensity of the lake effect snow. Okay, so if you see, uh, if you get a deep layer of cold air that comes off the lake, that deep layer of cold air promotes vertical growth resulting in intense snow bands. So it creates like convection like you tend to get with thunderstorms. You often see thunder snow with lake effect snow because it kind of mimics the thunderstorm, the convection, the, the vertical lift of the atmosphere as that, that band gets closer to the landmass. So it's kind of like a, like a, a thunderstorm. And you need a lot of moisture in the mid levels of the atmosphere. So if you say 10,000 feet, the air is completely saturated at 100%. But the saturation drops off a little bit and when you drop to 5,000 feet and when you get down to the surface, you get that drying. You, this is part of the reason why we didn't get much snow in the Twin Cities yesterday because the atmosphere did not have enough saturation compared to the upper levels. The upper levels of the atmosphere, it snowed, but the lower level of the atmosphere was dry. So that snow evaporated before it hit the ground. So we didn't get any snow from that storm. You could say we didn't even get an inch. We got a dusting. The snow we got was very dry, very low moisture. The wind blows and it just blew all over the place and blows away. That's what we got. And with lake effect snow, you want to make sure that you are getting a, um, uh, that you still have enough saturation in the lower levels of the atmosphere. We got it at 86%, for example, here. That's still pretty good. It's not 100, but it's still 86. 86 is pretty good that you don't lose all of your moisture as the snow falls through the, through the atmosphere. So that is going to create a whole lot of lake effect snow. So now you have any changes in the wind, as long as that wind is blowing across that lake, and the lake is relatively warm compared to the land temperature on the other side of the lake, and it's blowing across the length of the lake. So if you look at this diagram here, we're looking at Lake um, Erie. Yeah, Lake Erie. No, I don't know. That's not right. I think that one's Lake Ontario. So looking at Lake Ontario, if the wind was blowing north from the north across the lake to the south, then if you're on the southern end of the lake, that's where you're going to see all your lake effect snow. But the winds that we're dealing with is blowing off of Lake Erie. So it's blowing from the southwest toward the northeast. And it's blowing all of that moisture and colder air, that warmer air off the lake, over the very cold landmass over upstate New York, over western New York, and we're going to get that um, snow band. Now, that snow band will move according to the direction that the wind. So a slight deviation in the wind speed will cause that snow band to shift. Right now, the heaviest snow is falling just south of Buffalo. A little shift of that wind that band to the north will move that, that, uh, that wind to the north will move the snow band to the north and remove the heaviest snow back over the central city of Buffalo. So the direction of the wind is important in the, uh, um, the lake effect snow events. Again, so here is the lake effect rain and snow, the regions that tend to be impacted the most. Buffalo, upstate New York, western Pennsylvania, northeastern Ohio, upstate New York is the is hardest. Then we, the second hardest, I would say, is going to be off of Lake Huron, um, Ontario, Western Ontario is going to be the area, and um, Quebec is going to be the hardest areas hit. And then we're going to talk about Western Canada, Eastern Canada, near Lake Superior. Then we'll see a lot of it over Lake Michigan, off of 
Western Michigan, so Traverse City, Grand Rapids, Miles City, areas of Western Michigan gets hit hard. And then Wisconsin and Northern Michigan gets hit hard, of the upper UP gets hit hard off of Lake Superior. The worst, though, by far, is Buffalo. Buffalo, Watertown gets it the worst. Because the winds travel from the southwest to the northeast more often than anything during the winter months. So areas that get the, you get most of it is the winds blowing from the southwest to the northeast. But it tends to be warmer over the landmass coming from Illinois and Wisconsin because it's a much bigger landmass. But the air that helps to feed Lake Erie comes off of Lake Michigan too. That northwest the flow and then it changes from the northwest to the southwest from the from the northwest then from the southwest as it circulates around any areas of low pressure over Canada. So it's really crazy <laughs> and it's really spectacular. So I hope I, I explained that well because that's just pretty crazy to see all of that snow. So we're going to get a lot more extra snow over the Great Lakes as a result of the lake effect. So my name is Mr. G. Thank you for watching me today. Leave your likes, comments. Subscribe to the channel here on YouTube. Subscribe. Follow me on TikTok. I love your comments. You guys have been great with leaving comments on both platforms. I've really been seeing the engagement from you guys improve drastically over YouTube and TikTok. Keep it going. I really appreciate it. And let me know when I'm screwing up if you, if you like anything I can do differently. I know there's a lot to do that I can do differently. A lot of it is time and you have to prepare the forecast. And sometimes I don't have time, as much time left over to make the videos pretty. I have the software and technology to do it, but not always the time. And maybe that'll change once I can start earning an income with this. But right now, I'm not earning an income doing these videos. And that's not really necessarily my in, my goal. It's, I'm not trying to get rich off of the internet. Uh, you know. But if I can make a few dollars that can help me buy equipment and help me buy, um, help me buy better cameras, better computer stuff, uh, better like forecast equipment and things like that, then that was great. That's great. But I'm not going to ask people for money. Some people say, oh, you can do cash. I'm not going to ask people for money on the Internet. I'm going to earn it just like anybody else would. You know, if I get it from ads on my videos. and Like, that's what I like about YouTube is that YouTube has ads and you can make money just based on the ads and stuff like that. So, and if I if I decide to do lives, I, I feel like a narcissist doing lives. That's It just don't, I don't feel right. <laughs> So anyway, because I feel like just doing lives is begging for money on the internet. So I, I have a hard time doing that. So anyway, but anyway, thank you for watching me today. Leave your likes, comments, and subscribe to the channel. Bye-bye.